Hi guys, welcome to uh, Simple Game. It's the episode four, uh, which again is a miracle uh, because the if you speak to people, they don't even know this exists, and some people are like, "How did this not exist before?" And that's how most things in the universe are. The week was quite horrendous, man. From the last episode, uh, basically uh, our capital was burning, uh, which is quite a horrendous week for any uh, country. What's even scarier is that most people are not reacting to it, which is more upsetting. Uh, I I think um, I was with Naveen. No, I don't think I was with Naveen. I was with Naveen, and he was telling me it would be so bizarre if Washington D.C. was burning. and the, how people would react in america but here delhi was burning and even just like hey man all this is just propaganda and i'm like no it's it's pretty real uh, my privilege problems were just talking to friends and them not agreeing that this is a problem and that's such a weird situation you know it's like some it's like a dogs biting your leg and you're like yo it's dogs biting my leg and he's like i, I don't think there's a dog Uh, are you sure it's a dog? I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's a dog, man. I can see a dog biting me. He's like, Nah, nah, I don't think it's a dog biting you. So it's like you. So you're like, wait, this is the discussion we are stuck at. Whether it's even happening. Okay, so Shravan Muthu asks, what do you think about the protests and riots that are happening in the country with Trump on the parallel hand? And moreover, what is your take on religion? Should it affect individuals and groups so much? You know, the the beauty was Trump coming. Like, can you believe a better timing? uh we you know with him building walls to protect slums and stuff and then trump coming and he couldn't protect his capital dude it's just beautifully poetic of the country's going to shit and uh, he's like hey, please invest uh it was quite incredible the timing and still with that no one has any problem which is what is mind boggling you know what's amazing is when i'm slightly wrong no or any comedian is slightly wrong how in the comments or in the audience people correct us and we make that correction because we like yeah we can't be stupid we have a responsibility and we are smart uh but this dude just does this shit and no one has any problem it just amazes me how people have more problem with uh, zomato and swiggy not delivering their food on time because i paid for a service and i want my food in 20 minutes when your government is not giving you what you should have it just boggles my mind the people who are the most brainwashed are the ones who are the most you know s- <laughs> particular about customer service and i'm like dude the government is not doing shit in any other country you know like in canada your um, people say i'm a tax paying citizen like it's an insult for any government official to hear that that oh my god the person who's giving my salary is complaining uh in india it means nothing so i just feel like people i don't know i just feel like people don't know that they deserve better um because we don't have anything so um yeah so it's just terrible this protest is terrible and uh, what is your take on religion should it affect individuals and groups so much what do you think uh i didn't choose to be a christian i was just born into it so was my dad uh, so were my hindu friends and so were my muslim friends no one chose their religion so uh yeah i think it's just ridiculous that we still talk about it i also know there's so much nuance and history to everything but i think we can just agree on basic humanity uh so thank you uh shravan for asking me this question and thanks for like i hope you talk about this to your friends okay fine i can i think now this is a good time <laughs> to bring on the second guest of uh, simple gen uh which uh, who's a very good friend of mine and the thing is our relationship is very sacred uh but now it's coming to the public eye so can we have biswa kalyan rath in the studio oh my god take a seat man yo you stood up to welcome me to the seat yeah man i was going to hug you the sad brother is a sacred relationship <laughs> yeah because uh, i said sacred because i don't know we don't post about 
uh, our friendship too much because also i don't live with you uh, <laughs> <laughs> so but uh, when uh, i wanted this on the podcast i was saving you for yeah. much later okay 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 yeah because i was i'm figuring this out got it as like, i i can you can bring your you've seen bahubali i've seen bahubali in bahubali he gets the chariot with the slashing thing no yeah he only brings that when the <laughs> <laughs> when he's losing the war. Uh So as I like, I'll get bisso when I'm like, "Yo, you think this podcast is already good? I mean, the long recording is already good." And then you come. But then uh, I released the episode and we got a call from Bisso saying, "Oh, why am I not uh, in this?" And I was like, "Dude, do you think I would not That's call?" That's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Yo, why Karan before me? What does he offer that I don't?" and then uh, though he said uh, you only calling english speaking oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah uh, hum aaj hindi mein baat karenge pura podcast ha ji kyun nahi kyun nahi aaj ekdam kya chal raha hai uttar bharat mein kya chal raha hai kya chal raha hai kare bahut heavy tha kya jo maine kaha pehle no i think it's like very proper yeah kyunki uh, uh, mujhe kasht ho raha tha jo <laughs> jo desh mein ho raha hai उसे देख के मुझे दुख हो रहा है कि ये क्यों हो रहा है लाइक like, yeah. जो दूसरे समस्याएं हैं उसका कुछ नहीं हो रहा है और इस चीज पे इतनी लड़ाई वी नीड एजुकेशन मैन दैट्स व्हाट वी नीड इट्स ट्रू या या वी नीड एजुकेशन सॉल्व एवरीथिंग बट आल्सो नॉट जस्ट द एजुकेशन दैट यू हैव या वी नीड टू एजुकेट पीपल फॉर यू नो द वर्ल्ड दैट सो द एजुकेशन वी हैव या इज द वर्ल्ड वी आर कमिंग फ्रॉम but the world you are going to yeah. which is like with technology interconnected earlier you could have an opinion and could live in your bubble for your whole life yeah. without it ever being challenged without it ever ever affecting anybody yeah. but uh, we are going to a world where we are so interconnected everything really matters so we teach people i don't know if school will be able to come to that point in our lifetimes because we are also figuring it out yeah yeah but uh, it's like we have to teach our kids that stuff and you saying education is the issue but i know people who are like educated yeah. that's what i'm talking about yeah. it's not a traditional education uh-huh. that's not education that's training it's, yeah true it's just it's yeah it's more being able to understand that maybe your perspective is not the only perspective yeah yeah and that doesn't come from reading books only yeah like say um we read in civics right yeah. that this is uh, lok sabha's rajya sabha's president yeah Now they never teach you why Rajya Sabha is there. Yeah. When I mean, Lok Sabha is already there. Yeah. Oh yeah, true. Even I don't know. You know, it's very simple reason. Yeah. But they never teach you that Lok Sabha gets re-elected every five years. Yeah. So Rajya Sabha is there for continuity. Hmm. So one third members come every six years. Okay. Right. So yeah. that's why it's like it's consistent across uh, this thing. And secondly, if say people elect some party. Yeah. but the state's interests are not presented properly yeah. then rajya sabha is there yeah. and the bill will get stopped there yeah so fail safe so now why won't they teach this ah i mean this kind of stuff has to be taught yeah because the the teachers busy hitting you i guess ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah yeah i know i don't know if i'm overreacting but simple things like oh i was planning to probably get a house but then i'm like wait will i be safe Ten years from now, is it will uh, everything crash in ten years? I'm like thoughts like this seem insane. Five years ago, I never thought like the India's economy is gonna crash or uh, there's a riot gonna happen in my city. It's so bizarre that we have to think like this. I don't know if it's because it's too much information we're getting, but I know things are happening. And I'm sure it's not just us who feel like this. I'm sure there's a lot of like teenagers who just looking at Twitter and like I just wanted to think about my semester exam. There is too much to think about and feel about. Yeah. No right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with it? I'm sure like I don't know. It's like I don't know if the world has changed or there's more information available. Yeah. And the world is always like this. I don't feel th- there's this immediate solution to this. Of course, violence should be curbed and the police should do its work and all that. Um but the solution has to be very long term. Yeah. We have to think as a country where India is going. Yeah. We're still thinking where you're coming from. Yeah. and we're still fighting about issues that are like very old very old yeah um which that's why that's why it seems so hopeless like i'm like do will we ever solve this or this is like one thing we'll carry forever um i don't know i mean i have faith in our generation though 
I mean, when I, talk, when I talk to anyone <laughs> from the previous generation, I'm completely hopeless. Uh, but I, I know a lot of shitty people from our generation also. I know, also, I know. So. But it's not all of them, no? Like, yeah. Like, when I speak to the older generation, I'm like, oh shit, all of you are uh, stuck in... And That I, is also not true. There are, there are very uh, open-minded people in the older generation also. Yeah. Like... They are hiding in art uh, galleries. No, my grandmother is very open-minded. Yeah? Yeah, yeah she's very open-minded. Like, what is she... So, basically, she has had time to read every scripture. Yeah. And then she has time to understand every scripture. So, she doesn't go by the literal meaning of it. Wow. So, she's so, what, 400 years old? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, something like... Uh, there's some... Uh, discussion happening about uh, a wedding uh, intercast or something. Yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, Hot topic. Yeah. Uh, the family was tense, but my grandmother chilled out. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's a kind of Vedic wedding. It's written. Oh, wow. And then uh, people chose to ignore that and continue that debate. Oh, they she, ignored her. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they kind of acknowledged it, yeah. but then they just moved on. Yeah. But uh, she had a point. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And she is much more open minded. And not just that she understands it. She said it also. Mm. Right? Mm. So, yeah, I mean, there are open minded and closed minded people in every generation. Yeah. That's why but, it's, yeah. Not a, it's not just an education thing also. Like, I know some people who, who don't have the education that most people get. But somehow this innate human decency and understanding and empathy is not purely an education thing also. It's. It's you can, like your grandmother technically should not be this empathetic and open-minded from her Why? surrounding. Right? No, but that's the thing, no? Yeah. They grew up and uh, partition was during their lifetime. Yeah. Man. They saw it. Yeah. So Can't even imagine. Like, even, even if she didn't see it with her own eyes, yeah. there's a... Common consciousness, right? Yeah. There's a way the whole country reacts to it. And yeah. they absorbed it. Yeah. So, I think it's just... Uh, it's uh, very complicated. It's very... I, I mean, to solve this is very complicated. Yeah. It's so, not like their generation is bad, our generation is good. Yeah. There's much... Uh, Fair. Deeper issues. But it, I think the only good thing is now... Everyone I know is now interested in politics or what's going on. Which never happened before, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which People is, are way more politicized. Yeah, which is good. It's just that now people are aware of what's going on, which is nice. That's what I'm just hoping that people keep talking. Just keep talking to each other and no one should just assume um, that their perspective is enough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this way. Yeah, man. Uh, this, uh, you know, I'm realizing... Uh, as sitting here, yeah, I have no idea if this is interesting or very boring, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing; it doesn't have to be either. Like it, ha- it is either, right? It is. No, like, man, that's what I think. I think that I have very good idea about what's interesting or what's boring. I don't. I don't. No, I'm not saying that we have to know. Yeah, I'm saying it is either interesting or boring. But it's so individually subjective. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, what but, is interesting for one person is boring for someone else. Like, for yeah. example, I, this guilty of feeling is what I felt when I started the book. <laughs> I was like, shit, I haven't made a joke in 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just like, man, this is damn weird. Yeah, it's That's very like, weird. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, having, I'm also doing long pauses and you're also like, can you say something? Uh, yeah. But you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. No? It's odd, no? It's quite weird. It's almost like hanging out with people who can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> Which is our whole life. Uh, yeah. It's a okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now there's two of us and we're hanging out like fully oh there's nobody else but clearly there are, there are other people yeah. no three people here yeah. but there's so many people who are watching this yeah. okay if, yeah. if, if, if this is there this is there now right we have already done it yeah, yeah. okay we have done this hangout and they're later doing the hangout yeah. <laughs> see this thing you just did though yeah. a lot of people don't do in their regular lives which is this awareness of self awareness yeah, when you put three cameras, I guess you have to be... Uh, two cameras, sorry. You have to be self-aware. I mean, uh, we don't generally hang out with a mic like this, right? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, like, again, as you said, this is also not pure hanging out. This is a version of Biswa and Kenny in front of mics and in, in cameras. Yeah. So, when people think that... When this was the Kanan and I episode, like, oh, it's so nice to see you guys chill. We are not chilling. <laughs> it is orchestrated. Like, I have questions and Biswa took time out to come and sit here. 
and i had to call him there's no conversation <laughs> i'm like no i'll talk to this so any comes joins me um this uh skill of um being aware of what you're saying at the same time that what is it called super ego or something basically a lot of people don't have that ability while you're doing stand up uh you can literally in the middle of a joke be like acha ja raha hai and then you continue right a lot of people actually don't do it so when i when you tell told me this i know exactly what you're talking about but if you talk to a regular person they don't know it's interesting or boring because they're not self assessing every 5 seconds yeah right dude i hate boring <laughs> people man but they don't know they're boring that's the that's you know the people who are so boring that they don't know they're boring yeah are very nice because yeah. Yeah. they're just like they they're just being themselves yeah. so it's like watching a baby yeah hey it's just a boring person being boring yeah. yes no problem yeah. the people who have acknowledged as much that i am boring but haven't solved the problem <laughs> are the worst I've, right they're like i've not met too many people like that who know they're boring and they're they not, say something and they're like i'm sorry i bored you are bhai don't apologize no 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 those people does a baby just, ever apologize for anything yeah. it shits in your face yeah. and it just walks away right i, yeah. I mean if it's cat <laughs> if it's that kind of baby who can fly shit in your face and then walk away what i'm basically saying is yeah. like if saying that this is boring does not solve the problem yeah that's all i'm saying so the boring people are fine like completely boring is fine yeah completely self aware and interesting person is also fine <laughs> so he's saying the middle the middle oh my god he's like being aware but then stopping right when you have to make a change yeah self self aware boring people wow that's i've never thought about that i always assume that they can't change because they're not self aware but you're right i've met people who know their shit yeah <laughs> and they don't do anything about it the problem i feel the problem with boring people no yeah not obviously can't generalize yeah is their inability don't be polite you can say what you no their inability to listen okay it's funny cuz this was a while ago <laughs> i had a big inability to listen yeah something has changed about you tremendously yeah, yeah i don't know what happened i don't know i don't I know like, the age is it yeah like a few years ago you can't get a word across this one and i think he knew it also cuz yeah. he was the self aware not making a change guy he's like yeah. i know i talk a lot i know i talk a lot but he was still kind of yeah but, but that's now, the first step to changing right so that boring guy can eventually of course <laughs> <laughs> i hope for everybody's sake yeah but what do you think this it's i don't know man it hit me 29 hit me hard dude 29 yeah hit me really hard you've done 30 right yeah i don't feel like from 20 One to twenty six. I was like, I feel same. I feel same. Then some fucking horrible change started happening. Twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. I'm like, oh, I can never go back. Yeah, yeah. You think about. I think uh, there's some uh, somebody was telling me that uh, you say something here in the brain that actually that's not fully developed until you're at like twenty five and all. Yeah. So you don't have space for the people. Like that teenage hangover is still there. You're very self centered when you're young. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel that. I feel like the. older i'm getting the less self oriented goals i have yeah. before it was i want to make more money i want to be funny comedian i want to be successful now it's just like are my friends doing okay <laughs> <laughs> is my dad and mom okay yeah i mean i should care about my mom and dad but now it's just like but their happiness is very important you wanted to talk about uh, relatability relatability yeah so i'll just give you context yeah basically uh, i was doing a set about a real estate correct and you came hmm. and uh, it's about buying house and stuff no i asked you to do a set i already had that yeah set. i know i know yeah i already yeah. had that set yeah and then you you're said, making sound very romantic like you were doing stand up and then i came and then you changed no 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 you just <laughs> you showed up yeah, yeah right yeah and then um, i did that set this and is amazing and then yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the um, uh, we had a conversation yeah uh, that the set is not relatable to most people because most people have never bought a house yeah at least the people who are in the audience right so why is it working uh and uh, i didn't have an answer right then you did you you broke it down you 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 told me so for my my point was that you have transcended your writing to such a level that you can take any topic and the arcly seal of any comic is is this relatable or not but you can take something that's non relatable and add all the essential elements to make it relatable yeah henceforth you can do any topic but yeah that was the 
uh, initial answer, but yeah. then I thought about it, yeah. and I have a better answer. Yeah, because you self-analyze. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Kind of. That's why you're a comic. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, uh, people. So there are two things, right? Yeah. One is, I have done exactly this. That is recognition. Yeah. Uh, and you can do a recognition joke. Yeah. And not have a very funny punchline, so you'll get a laugh okay. of recognition. Recognition is the uh, like I have forgotten to switch off the gas. Something like that. And I'm outside my house. I'm like, oh my god, I was just my house is gonna explode. Yeah. So they're laughing because they recognize they've been in the same situation. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. yeah. Or like, you Reynolds ka pen leke usko India bana dete kya? Yeah. So everybody has done this. Yeah. Uh, but what they relate to is the emotion. Correct. So if you can establish the emotion, yeah. like think about. Uh, anime films not anime films animation films yeah do you, uh, i really like kung fu panda yeah do you oh it's our favorite film because it has a perfect story structure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, it's about a panda so technically that's what we should, how are you able to relate to yeah because the emotion is about not yeah. belonging and thinking you're not good enough so basically if you can uh um uh, display the emotion yeah Then the audience relates to the emotion, even if they've ne- not been there. Everybody knows that, but it's a skill to do it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like saying if you just invest in a good business and work hard, you will become a successful company. Everyone yeah, yeah. No, that, but it's what what you're doing is the most efficient way of doing that, which is a huge skill. Also, I'm not doing it like consciously. Yeah. Huh. When it happens, those jokes remain. Yeah, I mean that's a byproduct of. No, you are doing it consciously. It's it's like no, it's I'm like learning an instrument. Okay, in the beginning you're consciously playing every tune, and you do it so much. After that, that is not a thinking process. But then why do I have jokes that don't work? I have fifteen fifteen minutes that I think are very good. They don't work. Because they're bad comedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's true. That is also true. But that's what you know. That's another thing. Yeah. That I hate so much about stand up. Not about stand up in yeah. general, about people yeah. who achieve things, yeah. right? And then they act like they knew always. Correct. Okay. You don't know. Yeah. It's half the things you do don't work, and yeah. then one thing works, and then you go like, "I always knew it." No, you, you you're always wrong about so many things. Yeah. And then you forget that I was wrong about this, 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 and then that. There's actually one term again. I forgot the psychological term where if you become an expert at one field, you automatically think you know about everything. Yeah. Which is a big problem people have. So if you're an expert at human psychology, suddenly you're making comments about why air travel and space travel should not be done. Like, hello, you don't know anything about that field. <laughs> But because you're such an expert in one field, so I think it's come from that old bias of um, once you achieve success in one field, you think you're omega man, alpha man. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's, but, but it's not like people are doing it consciously, right? They're not. They're not. It's just how how your brain perceives the world. Yeah. That. Once you, because we live in this very success and failure universe, yeah, where those are also myths. Yeah, there's no such thing. Yeah, what is success? What is failure? If you have enough to eat and enough to breathe, then it's fine. No, it's funny. There was a question like that. Uh, I don't know where the question is. It'll come up here, which was, I, I, I I'm afraid that I want a simple life. <laughs> I just want to have a house, enough money to feed myself. But I'm afraid to tell my friends that because I'm not uh, that ambitious. Yeah. And I was just like, this is such an amazingly deep question. He doesn't even realize yeah. it. Because he realizes it. Yeah. Why do you think he doesn't realize it? He realizes it. No, I mean he doesn't realize the gravity of what he said. Yeah. He thinks that he is. Oh, I guess I'm not ambitious. Like, no, you're far more content with your life than you think you are. Mm. As you said, it's just like it's not success and failure. It's like. If you have enough to eat and you have all your body parts and you're not dying, it's enough. Uh, yeah, man, it's rough. But then why are you looking for real estate then? <laughs> <laughs> Just so that I have a place to stay, man. <laughs> In Bombay, it's ridiculous, man. <laughs> Just have. Just need to have a place to stay. This Bombay is so insane, dude. It, We don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so insane. It makes you feel bad for making lakhs and lakhs of money. It's like if you if you make a lot of money in Bombay, Bombay is like that's all. And you like if you go to any other city, you will be a king. Yeah. And there's another city that makes you feel like that, which is Dubai. In Dubai, you make a lot of money, but you spend a lot of money. But the city is pretty kick-ass, dude. <laughs> you know, here it's not even that. Yeah. You could buy a five-crore house, and in front of the house, this no 
road <laughs> <laughs> there's no part of the world which is like this it's so messed up uh i don't I, should we go back to uh, being re- relatable i don't think you feel yeah that's a, that's basic the basically that's the thought yeah. that uh, a lot of i don't know if this is going to advise territory they are giving me advice you no, can give I, me advice i'm not even giving you advice you can't give anyone advice. i don't know how else to phrase it yeah. but while writing a lot of people think that um i have to uh, i am writing for people who uh work uh, 10 to 5 yeah. on 9 to 5 yeah. so i have to write about a character who works 9 to 5 yeah Are you talking about writing fiction like a story? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Doesn't matter. They are not. If yeah. Then nine to five. Why are they going to read about nine to five? Then Lord of the Rings shouldn't yeah. exist. Yeah. A Game of Thrones is yeah. the most successful TV yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> There's no desk job scene in that. There's a beautiful interview yeah. of Zoya Akto where she answers this question. Uh, somebody asked him why do Indi- why do we make so many love stories in India? Okay. And she says that. uh because as a country we are denied the uh oh, wow. privilege of love yeah. so you have to see it on screen oh you know, man th- that's the truth of a whole generation they're that's, not allowed to love that's damn sad and it's so true also no so technically we are the largest creators of fantasy fiction yeah our, our love stories are fantasies yeah man she is like reached another level of self analysis yeah bro the zoya no <laughs> 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 oh man Do you remember how we used to be in Bangalore 6 years ago so Vaguely I mean uh, yeah. your memories are already distorted right Hey don't give me this distortion It's also Jan. true It's true it's but true. you don't have to analyze everything Hey you said it's a podcast <laughs> I don't have to be interesting <laughs> So I'm telling you the truth Do you underplay the journey like what is your perspective of your of what from from fucking doing uh, urban soul is 5 minutes to now doing amazon specials i don't feel different two seasons of a show i don't feel different man uh, what i feel of different course is you do. when i go on stage i have a little more confidence a lot more confidence you actually have- little <laughs> same confidence i have <laughs> you have the most confidence yeah same of anyone. confidence i have yeah no man you changed massively what are you saying Bro, that that to change is consistent, no? Hey, that me. I change. Dif- <laughs> do you feel different? I feel completely different. What do you feel differently? It's kind of scary because I'm like none of my original intentions of comedy are the same. Before legit, I was like I'll go to a room and be stupid and I'll make people laugh. Hmm. Now the intention is completely different. Is my work uh, consequential? Is my work worth being out there? Is my work good enough? All that shit I didn't think about before. and i should because people are actually listening to it or people deserve good content like i didn't think like that back then hmm aren't you more aware of the impact i don't mean like influencing positively like dude if you put out a video people will watch it you put out a special people will watch it and it's not as innocent as it used to be where um uh, like back in the day i was just like amazed that people are listening to me in a room and That's laughing a, yeah i get what you're saying also now it's more like is this comparable to good comedy is this a good work of writing all that shit i didn't think of before i think i felt the <laughs> <laughs> no i feel i have gone a little differently yeah i used to be very like everything has to be every joke has to be perfect and all and you still are like that what are you saying No, no. You, you eat and sleep jokes. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, before you cannot have a conversation with you, if you just come sit and be like, so listen to the joke. You're like, so you can ask me how I'm doing. <laughs> Why? <laughs> What's the point of that? If you're doing badly, then just tell me. Yeah. In the form of a joke. <laughs> uh, so, like now. Yeah. I'm more relaxed about like what jokes I'm doing or whatever. They uh-huh. don't have to be perfect or anything. Yeah, I don't care. So you have changed, no? Yeah, but I think it's again an age thing. Man. So you can't even predict how you're going to be. Can you predict? No, that's what. That's what you can't. It sucks. Okay, like now if I'm like this when I'm 29, when I'm 38, how can I plan for the future you if I don't know can't. who I'm going to be? You can't. And I know from experience that my the events I've experienced have nothing to do with it. It's hmm. just my age. Suddenly at 38, I'll suddenly want to stop doing comedy, who knows? Hmm. 
or yeah it's very annoying man why can't things be predictable yeah but that's the, man if things are predictable then you won't be a comedian no yeah no but a lot of people are not art fun. student or something a lot of people are not funny so it's okay as in La- the amount of people who are not funny but don't you believe that everybody has an inborn thing <laughs> no. some people are very boring that's an inborn <laughs> yeah. thing <laughs> yeah majority of people are boring and that's actually again if you met somebody who is not in their comfort zone you'll find them boring of course yeah i don't yeah. mean that hmm. i'm talking about people who but everybody has something Yeah, yeah, of course. Everyone's like a individual who has stories and experience. I don't go into like <laughs> no, value. No, no. It's true. It's true, but <laughs> of no? course, yeah. But most people joke suck. <laughs> yeah, joke wise, joke wise, most people are very bad. Yeah, but uh, some can build like bridges and stuff. Yeah, you have very interesting friends. Every time, all your friends are very entrepreneurial. Like, have created things and. Is that you like being around such people? I, I don't know, dude. I feel yeah. my friends are not. No, non-comic friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. feel they're great. Also, <laughs> they all they do something, something because they have to keep doing something, something. Yeah. Uh, on a side note, uh, Ashar is the guy who uh, listens to the whole thing, so he's become kind of a character now. So there was one question which I read and I burst out laughing. It's a girl called Pihu Chawla. <laughs> Her name is Pihu. Uh, She just asked some some very generic questions like, "I want to ask you how to boost self confidence. Just have uh, tea and sugar, and uh, uh, sleep, and you'll get self confidence." I don't know. It's uh, it's we are also figuring it out. How do you keep your confidence level intact when you're not seeing things go in the right direction? We also don't know that. How to be less harsh with oneself and be satisfied with whoever you are? These are such insanely hard things to achieve. and no one has ever achieved it so pihu don't worry you know but i also want to say one more thing say it people think other people have the answers yeah would nobody has that's exactly why i said there's no advice on this podcast because nobody has we don't know what we are doing and we're very lucky that whatever we did kind of worked out and it will be hypocritical to say that what worked for me worked for you until you believe that somebody has the answers yeah as in as long as you believe that somebody has the answers you never figure out shit by yourself you won't accept the answerlessness yeah all the helplessness of being yeah. right you just yeah. there is no answer <laughs> yeah yeah and it doesn't mean that's not in a nihilistic way that yeah not no i mean in a nihilistic <laughs> yeah. way you you might mean in a positive way but <laughs> there's nothing to this i think that's what gives it value that you can give it value Suddenly, you are two characters in a sketch about <laughs> some philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> you can give it value, yeah. It's like uh, m- for my dad, uh, I am the most important person in his life. He's just put value to me. Bro, he likes your brother more. Anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the beauty of it. You can just give like uh, no one values jokes. We give a lot of value to jokes, so it's important for us. But in reality, nothing has value. and that's what these are questions that but if you say that all these uh, how these motivational podcasts and books will sell dude they will still sell because people still believe that there are answers yeah i i honestly believe there are no answers even like maths is a way of studying the universe it doesn't answer any of your questions mm. it's a framework to study yeah right uh, science is also a framework to study yeah science doesn't what does science answer it answers the hows not the whys yeah Like how does how does a disease spread? He'll try to answer why does it spread. Who you knows? know, my chemistry teacher once she was teaching and she was talking about um, uh, chemical bonds, and she said this this bonds like this, and then one girl said why, <laughs> <laughs> and she flipped and she's like you can't ask a why in science. Yeah, and she stormed out of the class, and we we're like whoa, is that easy? We just ask a why and she gets pissed. Yeah, if yeah. you just keep asking how 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 how. Yeah. Eventually, you get to a point where you don't know. Yeah. And a lot of hows make a why. Correct. Right. So it's beautiful. Basically, yo, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sexy boy. Uh, so anyway, the third, the last thing was thirdly. Even though you asked three points, this is fourthly. <laughs> no, this. What is this? Firstly, second. Oh, firstly has three sub points. Secondly is whatever. Thirdly, uh, I don't know if you care, but I visualize Ashyar. As a guy with bit long hair, 
a bit dark complexion always carrying headphones and is too kind to listen to your shit anyway just let me know if he looks exactly the same me cause i'm hell curious he looks nothing like this <laughs> and pihu now we know exactly the kind of guy you're interested in uh <laughs> so yeah i just wanted to make uh, ashir smile cause poor guy has to listen to this shit do you listen to podcasts no no right i i do i do listen to podcasts that are like very specific about yeah. history and stuff but uh, do you remember the name yeah dan carlin's hardcore hardcore history oh hardcore history yeah, yes, yes, yes. okay although they can't listen to it why do it i don't like to listen to two people talking <laughs> <laughs> You know what's uh, what I love about what we do we can just say shit cuz we don't have a boss like if this was a radio show we can't say that mm. because if, if we're not producing it no and the boss will be like hello sir what's going on Til- take that again so i really love that we can do this shit even stand up like when you talk to the audience and say why have you come here like there's no other job where you can <laughs> insult the customer only yeah we are the anti job stand for anti job i don't know how but basically yeah that's that's the whole all of this clowning business yeah just <laughs> oh, what do you say <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on uh, <laughs> friendships the good <laughs> <laughs> because now i'm coming from when you called me it was very cute how you got upset cuz i thought you didn't care and then uh, when you call saying why you not call me i said like, oh i Bisho cares about the show. That's why he's calling. So it was very cute. Because yeah. you do, like you have this person of not giving a shit, but actually you care a lot. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the whole character. <laughs> I've only seen House MD. Yeah. Yeah. He's badass and is brutally honest, but he just wants love. I love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's the thing. This my character, not my character. What I'm portraying. as this guy who appears to be sensitive so people perceive me as this weak bitch okay and then people uh, perceive biswa as this bad as strong guy but no reality, dude no that's how people perceive they all they don't think about all this they just like no a, they do in my head <laughs> <laughs> no they like this guy is funny that guy is funny i love this guy i love that guy and uh, that both are all funny i just watch mirzapur or whatever mirzapur is a go to yeah series. we are just like fleeting seconds in somebody's browsing thing see i know all of this it's very hard to practice it okay It'll yeah be, yeah when you uh, when you do a joke and it doesn't work in a room you'll say fleeting seconds <laughs> no but <laughs> no, this kanan also no full gyan he gave in my episode i'm, I'm like, not giving you gyan bro no no i'm just, I'm just disagreeing with you <laughs> that fucker doesn't follow it himself and he's telling me i'm like bastard i know this but I have that also i have noticed that yeah. people give the advice that they need themselves the most yeah. because they're telling themselves Yeah, no. While telling you, yeah. What do you say to that? <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. You come got on. me there, man. Conclude, man. <laughs> you got me there. You got me there. One thing I learned from this whole real estate thing is, uh, yeah, I want to talk about real estate. I have a lot of, lot of thoughts about real estate. Is that first of all the broker aspect? That anything the broker says is utter and full bull crap. Okay. they have they know nothing more than it's literally like people who sell in the the apple store the the guys who are selling there how you are useless the apple store could have been empty and the same amounts of phones would be sold because the customer knows more than you you are just there to literally put it and then bill it mm. broker also you think when someone's buying something for a crore or two crores or three crores they have not done their research you know the broker is just like sir this area is great is like no I can see the area. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sir, um, you know, usually other buildings don't have this. No, they do. I I went to f- look at this house, and he said, "So this is uh, per square foot is some fifty eight thousand. Usually, sir, around area sixty seven thousand per square foot. And this is this is three years into real estate of me searching. I just looked at him. I said, No, are you crazy? I just said, Are you crazy? Like, huh? As there's no house selling for sixty-seven thousand. Tell me which house right now. He's like, no, sir. I'm saying in general. I'm like, how can you blatantly do this? Then it just uh, opened up my head that oh my god, anyone who sells me anything, I'm not going to believe. Also, uh, these brokers are a little uh, um, crazy with us. Yeah, because we look too young. Mm. 
but if you go to uh, that i noticed yeah the behavior fully changes yeah. the respect this age bias yeah. yeah but my main problem with real estate is that uh, <laughs> how do you in today's day and age yeah. right where i wasn't planning to live my life in mumbai ever yeah i had never been to mumbai 4 years 5 years ago yeah and then how do i just know that 5 years later i'll be in mumbai yeah and even if you want to be in mumbai yeah why do you want to how do i know if my work will be in goregaon or in lower prel or kolaba yeah how why do i constrain myself yeah. into like brick and mortar do you think that's also cuz you're not married and don't have kids uh that is partly it but also on the nature of our job yeah. and most jobs these days nobody is like ye company join ki hai abhi retire isi mein karenge yeah i don't know does that yeah i think people choose how uh, to how far the school is that's it yeah and in a city where like mumbai where every 1 km eats out 20 minutes of your life yeah every day yeah why would you buy a house oh, why do you say 20 minutes of your life <sighs> that makes it very sad yeah you're just sitting no yeah you don't get it back yeah <sighs> so that's one yeah no house is as good as the, your dream house yeah oh you know God. the house that you see in your dreams yeah even if you got that house and light and everything the maintenance nobody dreams of right you like oh kya mast hai but usko maintain karne mein bhi yeah is a lot so the bigger the house becomes or the better and if you have a lot of trees outside yeah. your house yeah and snakes will come then uh, mosquitoes will come then flies would come i like of snakes <sighs> was the first thing dude yeah snakes come it's the kind of when you're young i was like i want to have a super bike and have a lamborghini now i'm like where the hell will i park it what is the service yeah. cost what are the spare costs All this reality hits in logistics man. Yeah. That's the any house in the world has a problem. Yeah. There's no perfect house. Correct. Right? If yeah. it's too perfect then it's too far. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you if you buy a land and build your house and yeah. everything it'll the main problem is you can't live in it. Yeah. You can like right now if you want to buy something in Goa or whatever yeah. you want to live in it for 30 years. Yeah. And then what? Right? So just like people used to buy cars do you have a car? No. Can you have a car? No man. Would, I can't park it. Do you have anywhere. a car? Yeah. No. Yeah, and it suddenly became just wh- when do I need a car is when I want to go from one place to another place. Yeah. Right? So that's how house will become I feel. Yeah. That the population will stabilize and everybody who needs a house will have a house. Mm. And then it's just going to be rented out once the population stops rising. Yeah. Just like ghar there is enough place for everyone to stay in Bombay right now. I think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, more or less. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, you don't need more houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you just live on rent. It's also just the fact that we're talking about buying a house is a very niche group. In, yeah. In Bombay. No people buy houses still. No, in Bombay, yeah. In, in Bombay, Bombay nobody is buying. Yeah. But yeah, I I think this conversation usually happens when people have uh, a family and they like you should have kids and or, or they already have kids. So our problems also very new like very specific and so there's no one to empathize like when i talk to my dad who's lived for 63 years and had two three houses and you know has gone through all experience of life he cannot understand my problem at all because he's like first of all you're 29 you're looking for a house you're not married your job constantly involves you to move there are other investment plans which are much better all of this came recently So my dad's advice also makes no sense, and also the country is burning, and economies are now all-time low, and real estate has stagnated. So none of their advice also helps. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, buying a graveyard now for me to sleep. Oh yeah, we now. could do that. Yeah. <laughs> At least that's constant. So I was Can reading about this also. I was reading about this also. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know in Bombay or wherever they are trying to build vertical graveyards because there's not oh enough God. place in the ground <laughs> to bury people. I so, want to be buried in Manali. <laughs> you know, then there's a there's an expiry date on that also. Oh so, yeah, it's not forever. It's a lease yeah, plan. Yeah, 75 right? years or 100 years. They'll dig you up. They'll dig it up twice. Oh, yeah, you yeah. will go down. The next guy will come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine like when you dig right now, you find Mohanjo Daro. Okay, yeah. you find potteries and all. <laughs> They keep digging and the skeletons and skeletons of people keep coming out. Three oh thousand years from now. 
you know on that note let's uh, end the uh, long recording of our talk and that is very enlightening yeah. uh, thank you bisa for no problem, taking man. time and being on this feel uh, keep calling you uh, whenever there's a bahubali situation i'll call my friend biswa uh, please send your questions using hashtag simple can we didn't uh, answer a lot of questions in this episode because you know the country is burning guys uh, you can listen to this podcast on spotify and apple and google in any way you want to thank you so much for the support please continue watching and uh, have a lovely day please continue listening is what more uh, appropriate uh, ah, yeah the yeah. <laughs> deep voice uh, this podcast has been brought to you by technology bye 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 bye